A legendary double-bladed sword. Cannibalism. A miraculous spiderweb. Are these things part of the Sira, or are they based on weak and fabricated reports? Find out now on Sunni Defense. What happened over 1400 years ago with the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, and his companions, was preserved and transmitted to us through authentic chains of narration. That's how we know what happened, what was established in the Sunnah, and what the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, and his companions actually said and did. Over the years, things that aren't actually established made their way into the Sirah. Through this video, we will show the negative impact of adding events and statements that aren't authentic on our perception of the Sirah and what we hold to be true about the life of our beloved Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him. In 1977, the message, directed by Mustafa Akkad, was released for the first time in the English language. This movie captured the hearts of millions, Muslims and non-Muslims alike, and it was the first exposure to Islam for many. Since then, every year many Muslim families huddle around the TV set on Eid to watch the film. It has left an imprint in many of our minds on what the Sahaba looked and acted like. For many of us, when we hear someone mention the companion Hamza, we think of this guy, Anthony Quinn. And when we hear the name Bilal, we think of Johnny Seca. And when we hear of Zayd ibn Haritha, we think of this clean-shaven individual, Damien Thomas. Unfortunately, however, the film does not always accurately represent the early history of Islam and has erred in multiple ways. Naturally, the first issue with this film is that it portrays the noble companions of the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, and the fact that many of the actors who are portraying the noble companions are not even Muslim. Many scholars have issued fatawa stating that this is forbidden. However, in accordance with Islamic beliefs regarding depictions of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, his face was not depicted on screen, nor was his voice heard. Instead, they used music. Of course, there wasn't mystical music following the Prophet Muhammad wherever he went, peace and blessings be upon him. Also, to avoid the Prophet's depiction, his words, as he spoke them, were repeated by somebody else. Although this is inaccurate, those things are a given and fairly obvious inaccuracies to most viewers. The rule about not depicting the Prophet Muhammad was also extended to his wives, his daughters, and the rightly guided caliphs, Abu Bakr, Omar, Uthman, and Ali. This left Muhammad's uncle Hamza, Anthony Quinn, and his adopted son Zaid, Damian Thomas, as the central characters. Due to this, many main companions of the Prophet Muhammad were heavily underrepresented throughout the entire movie, some of them not even mentioned at all. This can lead someone who hasn't studied the life of the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, to have a heavily distorted view of the key figures involved in his life. Throughout the film, some of the few companions who are presented are shown to be beardless, while it's known that the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, ordered all the male companions to grow their beards. This potentially gives off a subliminal message that a Muslim man going clean-shaven is something permissible, while it's in fact haram. In this scene, Zayd is telling some Meccans about what the Prophet experienced in the cave of Hira. He was alone in the cave. Suddenly, an angel came into him. Gabriel came into him makes it sound like the Christian idea of the Holy Spirit entering someone or possessing them rather than revelation. The angel Gabriel appeared before the Prophet Muhammad in the cave. He was not inside of him. Here, the leaders of Quraysh have sent the Prophet's uncle, Abu Talib, to try to convince the Prophet to renounce his message, with promises of riches and power in return. The Prophet refuses and apparently sends his uncle back with the following message. Were they to put the sun in my right hand and the moon in my left, I would not renounce my message which is from God. This is a very famous statement attributed to the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. You've probably heard it dozens of times. However, despite sounding nice, this quote is not authentic. In this scene, Abu Sufyan is portrayed as mocking the beliefs of the Muslims. Now were we to replace 300 gods with just one, whom we cannot even see, who was supposed to be in Taif and Medina, here in my house, in Jerusalem, on the moon? <laughs> Wait, what? Muslims don't believe that. Allah is not everywhere. He is known to be above his throne. Also, this is a strange portrayal of the Quraysh's reaction to Islam, as the Quraysh already believed in Allah, as mentioned in the Quran. The only difference was that they had other deities besides Allah. And here's a nice quote about equality. Is black Bilal, who I paid money for, equal to me? Yes. Muhammad says, before God, all men are as equal as the teeth of a comb. As noble and as amazing as it sounds, unfortunately it is not authentically attributed to the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. 
In this dramatic scene, the Muslims come out of the shadows openly proclaiming Islam by shouting the testimony of faith, or Shahada. There is no God but God, and Muhammad is the messenger of God. Unfortunately, this is not an accurate translation of the Shahada. The correct meaning would be, there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah, or there is no true deity except Allah. In another epic scene, we are introduced to the star of the movie, Anthony Quinn's Hamza. Hamza arrives to defend the Prophet, proclaims Islam, and gives Abu Jahl an epic backhand. Muhammad is a fraud! Unfortunately, however, this is not an authentic version of Hamza's conversion to Islam. This scene depicts the first hijra in which a group of Muslims arrive in the court of Najashi and speak to him about Jesus and Islam. Relate in the book the story of Mary, how she withdrew from her family to a place in the east, how we sent to her our angel Gabriel who said, I am a messenger from your God to announce the birth of a holy son to you. Holy son? This is a mistranslation of the verse, Ulamun Zakiya, meaning pure child. The film is vague whether or not Abu Talib, the beloved uncle of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, accepted Islam. This is likely due to the Twelver Shia influence, as the movie was approved by the Shia Council of Lebanon and Sunni al-Azhar University, because the Shias believed that Abu Talib accepted Islam and took his shahada. But as we know from our authentic sources, Abu Talib rejected Islam and affirmed his paganism in the way of his forefathers during his last breaths. The final belief of Abu Talib was most likely made ambiguous in the film to avoid controversy. Okay, time to make you doubt everything you were ever told. This depiction of events of Allah protecting the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, with a spider web and a bird's nest, despite being miraculous, is based on a weak narration. Rather, the authentic story is that the polytheists came close to seeing the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, and his companion Abu Bakr in the cave, but Allah was with them and supported them by hiding them from their enemies and giving them tranquility, as explained in the Quran, as well as Sahih al-Bukhari. Here, the Quraysh are enacting a plan to assassinate the Prophet Muhammad in his sleep, but find Ali sleeping in his bed. No! Ali, his cousin, lay there to die for him? This event is based on a weak and disputed narration. I know, I know. The first time I heard this, I also thought that many of the things I had been taught about the Prophet Muhammad were simply not true. This scene of the citizens of Medina welcoming the Prophet Muhammad and Abu Bakr gave many viewers goosebumps. Sorry to break your hearts yet again, but this awesome welcome song, however, is not authentic. Not to mention that the scene makes it sound like all the people of Medina rehearsed the song and sang it in unison. Upon arrival in Medina, the hypocrite Ibn Salul invited the Prophet to stay with him. You will stay with me, messenger of God. I have the best house in Medina. This didn't happen. In this scene, the companions along with the Prophet Muhammad are working in the hot sun to build the first mosque. Hamza is annoyed that the Prophet is working. Look, he went for more. Work is a worship, he says. He's 53 years old. How old are you? This quote, work is worship, which is attributed to the Prophet, is a fabrication. Here the Muslims are discussing what to use for the call to prayer. Why not the human voice? As in Omar ibn al-Hattab's vision. The Prophet agrees. He means you, Bilal. Me? You have a good voice. Use it. Climb up there. The version related by Omar was inspiration from Allah. However, in this scene, it implies the adhan was simply improvised by Bilal. Allah be pleased with him. He waves his hand in the scene to call people to come as if he just made up the words and was going along with whatever came to his head. What actually happened was that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, taught Bilal the words of the Adhan. Of course, the director and writers cannot include all the intricacies, but it is important that we understand how things actually happened. And in this scene, it is announced that the Muslims would be paired as brothers. Today, a man of Medina will embrace a man of Mecca. Each will share half and half. Reach out. Embrace your neighbor in brotherhood. Now, Bilal didn't actually hug Ibn Salul, the hypocrite. What happened was that the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, organized and paired each person from the Muhajireen with another person from amongst the Ansar to be brothers. Here, the leaders of Quraysh are reading some instructions from the Prophet Muhammad regarding the pact with the non-Muslims in Medina. 
Jews and Christians have equal rights with Muslims. The Jews who attach themselves to our commonwealth shall be protected. The Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, did not actually make a treaty with the Christians and the Jews upon his arrival in Medina. A treaty was made with them later on. My favorite scene as a child from the movie was the Battle of Badr and the revealing of Ali's sword. And Ali. The real sword of Adi was not double-bladed. This is a fabrication that has become popular within Shia culture, where the sword is often worn and displayed much like the Christians do, the cross. Also, showing the sword here makes no sense at all, because the sword was given to Adi after the Battle of Badr. So how did Adi have it before the battle started? This double-bladed sword is actually a Majusi weapon, and a dagger in the same shape was used by Abu Lu'lu al-Majusi in his terrorist attack against the Caliph Omar ibn al-Khattab, which resulted in Omar's martyrdom. Ali's sword was actually jagged. This scene depicts Umayyah's death at the hands of Bilal. However, in actuality, Bilal didn't kill Umayyah ibn Khalif in battle. Matter of fact, Umayyah didn't even die during the battle. He was captured and Bilal led a group of Ansar to seek him out, and it was the Ansar who actually killed Umayyah. This scene shows a random unknown person killing Abu Jahl during the Battle of Badr, where in reality it was two young boys from the Ansar who sought out revenge for his abuse of the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him and killed him. This scene depicts the aftermath of the Battle of Uhud. Abu Sufyan is taunting the Muslims and Zayd responds to the taunt. Our dead have answered to your dead! Our dead are in paradise! Your dead are in hellfire! This line was actually said by Umar ibn al-Khattab, not Zayd ibn Haritha. May Allah be pleased with them both. Again adding to the fact of underrepresentation of other major companions. Throughout this film, Hind, the wife of Abu Sufyan, is presented as an evil character and the main female villain of the story. Be more my brother than you are now. You! Kick him for his cleverness. You coward! And when you are dead, Hamza, I will cut your heart out. Taste your blood. I, Hind. Although Hind initially opposed the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him, she had nothing to do with the killing of Hamza, nor did she order his mutilation. But more about this later. This scene alludes to him chewing or eating the liver of Hamza. However, there is no authentic evidence to suggest that this actually happened. Boshi, cut him open. Cut him. This part of the film, when Abu Sufyan comes back to Medina to renew the truce after it was broken, is also not authentic. Ahmed, we did not break the truce. Later in the movie, the Muslims are spreading the message of Islam after the Treaty of Hudaybiyah, and their narrations and verses of the Quran are mentioned. The ink of a scholar is holier than the blood of a martyr. However, this statement, the ink of the scholar is holier than the blood of the martyr, is simply not authentic. It is not in any sahih hadith that speaks about the virtue of the ink of the scholars in and of itself, let alone being superior to the blood of the martyr. With regard to the blood of the martyr, it is proven from authentic narrations that it will come on the day of judgment with its color of blood, but its fragrance of musk, and the martyr will be forgiven with the first drop of his blood. This is one of the last scenes of the movie, and it shows what is supposedly the female companions showing their necks and parts of their hair. This is very important subliminal messaging that the female companions differed in their coverings, and that maybe it's acceptable for Muslim women to show some of their skin or uncover parts of their hair. Throughout the film, the word Muslims is used to describe Muslims. Muslim. 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 Muslims. The film also makes it seem as if the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, passed away shortly after the conquest of Mecca. It also failed to portray several key events in the life of the Prophet, such as the Isra wal Miraj, many military expeditions and battles, marriages, dealing with false prophets and the continuation of receiving revelation, other than the initial portrayal in the movie, all of which deserved mention to give a fuller representation of the life of the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. This film again shows its Shia influence in smearing Banu Amiya as evil. It presents Abu Sufyan and Hind as being bitter and vengeful in accepting Islam. Did my father and brother die for my husband to run away? You go home! You! We cannot resist! Mecca is taken. <laughs> When in reality, they openly and enthusiastically proclaimed their Islam and wanted to right their wrongs. This villainous depiction may be due to Shia influence as it tries to portray the mother of Muawiyah and the family members of Banu Umayyah as an all-encompassing evil. When making a film, there is naturally a need for villains, and directors have creative freedom and often exaggerate the evil nature of characters to add to the drama. 
Hind, Abu Sufyan, and Wahashi all fell victim to this. When portraying or even talking about the Sahaba, we need to be extremely cautious and sensitive. What the film did not show was that the aforementioned people did indeed wholeheartedly accept Islam, and even went on to serve Islam in many great ways. Abu Sufyan commanded Muslim armies and became the father-in-law of the Prophet after he gave his daughter in marriage to him, and also he gave Muawiyah to serve the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, as a scribe of the Qur'an. With regards to Wa'shi, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, accepted his Islam and spoke with him. However, he asked him to leave so he would not be reminded of the death of his uncle Hamza. Wa'shi then went on to fight in jihad and was also the one who killed the infamous Musaylama al kadhab Likewise, Hind declared her love for the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, and his family. It is narrated in Al-Bukhari that she said to the Prophet Muhammad, There is no family on the surface of the earth whom I see honored more than yours. Consequently, one can understand the disdain many scholars of Ahl sunnah show towards the making of the movie and continue to show with series created that depict the lives of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and his companions. It is important that we stick to what is established in the authentic sunnah. And there you have it. Everything wrong with the movie, The Message. For the authentic narrative and detailed explanations of the mistakes in the movie, please refer to the links in the video description. If you think we've missed something, please let us know in the comment section below, and don't forget to subscribe to Sunni Defense and turn on notifications. Until next time, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.